basic question to ask all of you. Um, has anyone on the panel considered the importance of introducing the concept of teaching Latin and Greek at the primary and secondary school level, reintroducing the concept of not compulsory uh, instruction, but at least widespread uh, optional language instruction? I'd like to know how you see the prospect of that and whether you think it's a good idea. I'll, I'll speak brief, briefly to it and then pass it along. I, one of the things I was trying to trace as well to some extent is the crisis of public education. Um, and again, from the perspective of Du Bois as a sociologist and as someone here, myself, who thinks that archaeology is very important and cultural archaeology is important, um, if we look at the origins of public education, we get a sense of where we're going and why we're where we are. And yes, I think part of addressing that crisis has to be a rethinking of public education from its very roots, beginning with K through 12. Um, I don't know how to address that, but I, I know that that's got to be addressed. Um, I don't know what they're doing in private schools anymore. I don't know uh, to what extent these subjects are taught from very early on at schools like Choate. One of the things I did in teaching this material was to um, go back and look at the dates of origin for schools like Phillips Academy and Choate. These are long-standing, deep-rooted institutions that begin with the nation. <laughs> Phillips Academy is maybe a year or two off from the Declaration of, of Independence. Um, and so their traditions are going to be different from the traditions of public education. But we need to do an archaeology of public education and begin to rethink in, in very progressive ways um, and um, sort of roll up your sleeves kinds of ways, not just to kind of dismissively say, yes, we all know that public education is of value, but to do a real archaeology and understand its origins um, and where we're going uh, as a nation in terms of public education. Quick answers, I haven't given it as much thought as probably should have. Um, I think it, it's a challenge. Um, I think there is more headroom in not introducing or in reintroducing Latin and even Greek, uh, but uh, in other areas, uh, whether it's you know, mythology or you know, teaching Antigone alongside you know, uh, Martin Luther King's letter. Um, Blanchette High School in Seattle, a uh, Catholic school, um, 20 years ago or so, their Latin teacher retired. She was replaced with someone teaching Japanese. Um, and I think that, in a nutshell, describes a lot of what has happened. Uh, and this is part of the, one of the points I was trying to make earlier. As new things come on, uh, unless you're going to grow, it's awfully hard. Um, and as you know, our country already does a terrible job at uh, K-12 uh, language acquisition. And that's when it's easy. Now, if you wait until college, uh, you know, I mean, it's just as you know, it's just so much more difficult. Um, but honestly, I think that will be a huge, huge uphill battle. Uh, when I look at what happens in K-12 and, and whether you want to call it a crisis, but the issues they're going through, I don't see that happening anytime soon. At least, any, you know, some individual schools will do it, uh, but wholesale, I think unlikely, but... Professor Naj, are you more optimistic? Okay. Well, I don't want to get political, <laughs> but uh, when, when there were these taxpayer revolts, and this is decades ago, uh, and the first thing that was always cut was, was uh, language or foreign language, and, uh, and um, there was a lot of, shall we say, already back then, I'm, I'm speaking now of, of almost the distant past, and there's the famous anecdote about a superintendent of education who said, well, if English was good enough for Jesus Christ, it's good enough for me. <laughs> so, so, I... I, I, I and there are variations on that where he really said, if King James was good enough for Jesus Christ, but I don't think that, that line works anymore because King James is out the window too. And, and uh, uh, so, uh, it, but in, instead of, instead of um, delivering Jeremiah's at you, I would say that uh, there's this very great need to to um, educate the public about education in a democracy and going back to 
how uh, a democracy can really live only if, if the democracy has a lively education and that has been, uh, I think, um, neglected. And so uh, I'm, I'm in the triage mode. Uh, when I was chair of classics at Harvard, uh, even at an elite school like that, most incoming first year people had no language background whatsoever. And in fact, Harvard's language requirement is worse than, let's say, the language requirement of Ohio State, where you have two years, and Harvard only has one, and now we have a certificate for if, if you take, uh, but, but it's still basically a one-year language requirement. So the triage is this, is, is during our survival mode, and I'm thinking again of the little girl crossing the Hellespont, I don't want her to drown again, <laughs> is, is uh, at least with undergraduates, okay, they may not be at the best learning curve when it comes to cognitive abilities to pick up languages, but frankly, at this stage of our history, uh, I think the thing is to develop a very intensive uh, classical language programs on the college level for now, because there, there are so many hungry people and there's such hunger for this if, if you just do it right. And, and then eventually, uh, I, I think we can build backwards to reinforcing secondary education and then reinforcing primary, but it has to start on a college level. We're not even there on a college level, and I think that's where it has to start. And so, for example, at Harvard, eventually we developed the classics major program where you could come in as a total zero in both Latin and Greek and uh, end up knowing enough that you could be competitive for a PhD program. Now that means you have to work like a demon, but uh, that's another thing that young people at college age can do, which work like demons. And the thing is how to motivate the demonic drive. <laughs> It's a striking fact that while American college education is generally pretty good, American K-12 through education is pretty much deplorable, which makes me wonder what would happen if we tried to engage the universities more in what goes on at the K-12 through level. And I actually have a model for this, which is what the University of Chicago is doing in Chicago now. It has started a number of charter schools, uh, the admission to which is random, it's a lottery. And the university, through its charter schools, now accounts for 8% of the students going to the Chicago public school system. Now, 8% is not a lot, but it's also not negligible. And those students are getting a far better education than they would have otherwise. I don't think it yet includes Greek and Latin, but I think on this model, a lot more would be possible than otherwise. <laughs>